appreciate that this is now the end of 2021, but this is the first time I've seen this year's model, and I feel that some of my audience might want to see it too. There have been quite a few changes between this and last year's Model 3s, so let's start with the obvious. All of that shiny chrome around the windows, the handles, the side repeaters has gone black. I think it looks really nice. Still in shiny chrome, the Tesla logos at the front and back. The boot now has a power assisted tailgate. Now this is something that's been missing from all the previous Model 3s. It seems crazy that you can spend up to £70,000 on a car with a manual boot. Looking inside now, you can see that the wood veneer that runs across the dashboard also extends to the doors. This is carbon fibre in the performance model, of course, and the door sills are black to match the new dechromed exterior. The new centre console design has a new satin material, which is much less of a fingerprint magnet than the 2020 model. There's also a new phone charger, which I think it looks good, but I find it more distracting. As in this model, you see your phone when you're driving. There is also slightly more storage underneath the wireless phone charger on the last year's model. Now there's two ways to open a door on a Model 3, the right way and the wrong way. Now underneath the handle, we've got um, an emergency release. Now too many people pull this, but it can actually damage the glass, as it doesn't cause the glass to drop when the door opens. Instead, you want to press the button on the top. This button is much more obvious now on this model than last year's. Talking about the windows, the front door windows are double glazed. Now you can't really notice unless you look carefully, but you can see there's two pieces of glass that are sandwiched together with some sort of glue. This makes the window feel a little bit more rigid, a little bit harder. Um, the rear doors are still the standard single piece glass. Now I haven't noticed a difference in sound reduction with my ears while driving a car. It's still reasonably quiet, although it is one of the noisier electric vehicles to be in. The front lights have a slightly different design. They look very similar to last year's model, but the projected beam pattern is different and it is noticeable if you know what you're looking for. The cheapest stock wheels are these 18 inch wheels that come with these brand new designed aero wheel covers. The tyres are the same Michelin Pilot Sport 4S that we've seen in the previous years. And just onto some minor things, these scroll wheels on the steering wheel are now metal instead of plastic. You can definitely feel them because they're cold to the touch. The car has now been designed for sentry mode. It comes with this Tesla 128 gigabyte USB drive, USB 3 of course, and this lives in the glove box, which is much better than storing it under the center console because the glove box can be locked. Now the two sun visors are exactly the same as in the previous years, but the way they mount is different. They've got this nice magnetic attachment for closing them and opening them, which just makes them feel a little bit better than they did before. The emergency hazard button is exactly where it was before, but it's now twice as big, and the SOS call button that was there is now on the center console. The driving experience is more or less the same, but there are a couple of changes that will make things slightly more comfortable. So one of them is that the air vents only turn on when somebody's sitting in the seat in front of them. It was always true for the rear air vents, but now it's true for the front passenger too. So if there's no one in the car except the driver, only the driver's air vents will be running. Of course, Tesla is focused on efficiency with this model. This is the first model with a heat pump. What this means is the car needs about half as much energy to maintain it a nice warm interior temperature than it did before. The auto dimming rear mirror also has been joined by auto dimming rear side mirrors. And while all these subtle little changes don't mean much in and of themselves, taken together, it means this model is more than just a facelift. It's almost like a new car. If this video was useful to you and you'd like to learn more, please head over to divingdeveloper.net. That's www.divingdeveloper.net. And also I have to say thank you to Novo Insurance who kindly provided this car to me. So thank you very much to them. Their details can be found in the description box below. Please like, share with your friends, subscribe, comment down below. And if you have been, thank you very much for watching.